Okay, hi Booktube, Erin here, hope you're doing okay. Today I'm going to be talking a bit about what I read in July, and then I've got a big, slightly unrealistic pile of books for uh, for August, uh, so I'll get to that in a bit. Uh, but uh, starting off with, with July and what I read there, I've uh, got a nice handful of books here, and, and the first one here uh, was something I read for Jane Austen in July, uh, and I only managed to do the um, uh, the first prompt, which is, which is just to read something by uh, by Jane Austen. So I read uh, Mansfield Park, which is the only of her major novels, um, her six major novels that I haven't read yet. And I, I thought it was okay. It wasn't my favourite, uh, not my least favourite, um, but just sort of, yeah, okay. Um, I think I would... Uh, so my, my, my least favourite Jane Austen book is Emma, uh, which I, I still think is a really good book, so it's, you know, it's okay. <laughs> um, but... Um, I would put it slightly above um, Emma, and I think it's interesting because the main character is quite shy, um, and she doesn't want to draw too much attention to herself. Um, and, and maybe usually, you know, with a character like Emma, um, or with you know Elizabeth Bennet or someone, um, they're a little more headstrong, maybe, or um, you know, they're maybe a little happier to, to speak their opinion. And if they're not going to say something. It's not because they're too shy, you know, it's, it's maybe more of a social thing that's going to keep them from saying something. Um, and so uh, it's just an interesting contrast there between uh, uh, Fanny, the main character in, in Mansfield Park, and some of Jane Austen's other heroines. Uh, then moving on, I read some Baudelaire. I read The Flowers of Evil, uh, which was quite fun. Um, I think with Baudelaire, I prefer his more introspective poems where he's you know, talking about himself and or about his feelings and stuff like that, rather than the overflowing kind of crazy poems about uh, where he's either trying to praise something or trying to damn something. Um, I did have a few problems with the uh, with the translation. Uh, I thought it was a little bit clunky that the translator was just trying a bit too hard to get the meaning, um, you know, of each individual word in there, rather than just um, give us the flavour of each poem. Uh, there are a few poems that worked really well in English that you know I thought he did a good job with, um, but on on the whole it was a bit clunky in in my opinion. Then sticking with um, with French poetry, we've got Pierre Reverdy here, a nice slim selection of his work uh, from the New York Review of Books, and this has got loads of translators in here. It was really fun to compare different translators. So stuff here from John Ashbery. Uh, there's a Frank O'Hara translation here, uh, Ron Paget, Richard Seaberth, uh, Lydia Davis, l l those are really great people. Um, and yeah, Pierre Reverdy is a great poet. He's, uh, he was really influential on surrealist poets, and he is a bit of a, of a, uh, of a surrealist himself, I think. But um, he's classed as, um, often as a cubist poet, mainly because he was friends with Picasso and Braque. And, People like that, and they were illustrating his his uh, his poetry books, uh, which is quite cool. And I think Matisse, you know, one of the um, you know impressionist post impressionists, he was, you know, still alive and kicking when uh, Riverdi was writing, and he illustrated one of his books as well, which was pretty cool. Uh, then on something uh, a little different, we've got a chess story by Stefan Z Stefan Zweig, uh, which has been lying around for a while, so I thought I'd give it a go. Um, and yeah, it's one of those books where even if you try, you know, if you're like, okay, I'm going to get to like halfway through and then I'll put it down um, and do something else um, or, or go to bed, which was my do something else in this case. Um, I just couldn't put it down. Uh, so I, I stayed up a little too late and um, it just gets to a point where the, you know, it's a point of no return. Um, and it's just a great examination of where the human mind will go, where it has, when it has no other options. Um, and I wouldn't have thought chess could be so enthralling. And then finally, we've got The Magic Mountain by Thomas Mann. My first time reading Thomas Mann, and I absolutely loved it. Um, I really loved his writing style. Um, it was very, very warm, inclusive, um, friendly voice. Um, and I was thinking, you know, early on in the book that if the writing style's like this, and if the characters are as interesting and um, eccentric, uh, you know, going on uh, further into the book, then it'll be a delightful, fun book. Um, and it does continue to be fun and eccentric and you know, just a bit different. Um, and it's its own little microcosm, 
you know, this this uh, this sanatorium in this book is its own little world. But then it kind of pulls you out of it a little bit, or at least shows you the, the dangers or the limitations of this and the way that history kind of gets in the way. So yeah, really, really good book. It's like, like a big, big five stars for me, as was a, a chess story, actually. Um, so let's go on to, uh, into August then. Uh, so in, in July, I haven't really been reading much Proust, um, so I've kind of let him slide a little bit, uh, which is okay. Um, as I've said, many a time he's just sort of background reading at the moment. He's I'm taking him really, really slowly. Um, so I'm going to hopefully continue with Proust um, on into the second volume of uh, Remembrance of Things Past. And um, I mean, I fully expect I'll still be reading that volume in September, which is totally fine. Um, and then on into my big pile of novels and short story collections and such that I want to get through in August. Um, and we'll see how many of them I get through. Um, it's more of a pile of possibilities, I suppose. And I'll just take whichever one takes my fancy at any given time. On the top of my uh, pile here, it's a book that is adjacent to a, a reading event. So one of the big reading events in August is Garb August. I'm sure you've seen it around. Um, and um, every time someone says Garb August, I keep thinking of Gabo August for some reason. And Gabo being the affectionate nickname for uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. So I'm going to read Love in the Time of Cholera for Gabo August. Um, and um, we'll see how it goes. It'll be my first time uh, with Marquez. Uh, then onto an author that I have read before, I've loved, and it's really been too long uh, since I've read anything by her. That's Toni Morrison, and it's one of the big books by her that I just haven't got to yet. Big in terms of um, stature, I suppose, not in terms of page count. Uh, and that's Beloved. Um, I haven't read Beloved yet, um, and it's been like, I don't know, five years or something since I've read a Toni Morrison. So I'm going to hopefully read this in August. Um, another writer that I love. Um, and he's one of those writers that I want to read at least one thing by him every year, and that's Joseph Conrad. So I've got The Heart of Darkness here, which I haven't read yet. And this is only a slim thing. Uh, it's got a few other stories in there as well. Um, so I might fit that in. Uh, we've got some more short stories here. This is Ray Bradbury, so a little bit different, but just as great, I think. The Illustrated Man, which has been on my shelves for ages. It's really, really bad that it's been so long. Um, you know, just sitting there, uh, unread. Uh, but I'm, yeah, I really want to try and read at least a few uh, stories in there. Um, so, but we'll see how that goes. Another slim one, which I can hopefully slot in quite easily. Um, this is uh, J.M. Coetzee, uh, In the Heart of the Country, which sounds like quite a dark but fascinating book. Uh, looking into, um, yeah, sort of the, the darker elements of society in South America. Uh, not South America, South Africa, sorry. Um, and then the last on this main list, there, there are a couple of uh, waves and strays to come, but um, the, the last on this main list of books I want to get to uh, in August is uh, Piranesi by Susanna Clarke. I've heard, I've heard mixed things, so I want to make up my own mind, um, but I've never read anything by uh, Susanna Clarke either, so um, I'll be interested to see how that one goes. And here are a couple that might slide in there, they're short story collections, um, but I might even, I'm filming this on, on Friday, so I've got, you know, until uh, Sunday for the end of um, July, so I might end up just reading one or, or both of these, we'll see, uh, before the end of the month, or at least make some progress. Uh, so we've got The the Last Wolf by Laszlo Krasna Hawkeye, um, so I read um, his short novel, uh, Chasing Homer for the Booktube Prize earlier this year and really, really enjoyed it. So I've got some more Lashlo Krasna Hawkeye here and this is um, two short stories by him. Um, and then uh, the last one here for August. Again, maybe if I just read um, a few short stories between now and the end of August, uh, but we'll see. We've got some essential stories and the moon will sit, no, and the earth will sit on the moon by Nikolai Gogol. And I've never read any any Google, but uh, from what I've heard, he'll be uh, right up my alley. So, yeah, there we go. That's um, that's everything I want to try and read. I'll just show you the whole whole pile of books here for August. Um, so this is this is not including Proust. It just about fits in my hand, including Proust. It would.
probably not fit in my hand. But there we go. That's um, what I'll be reading. And I hope you've enjoyed your July reading and I hope you have a great August. So until next time, thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, bye.